Ceratopsians, the horned dinosaurs of the Mesozoic, striking awe and wonder with their dazzling displays of horns, frills, and spikes, each one with their own unique arrangements, be it marginal variations to startling divergences, giving rise to some of the most iconic dinosaurs ever known, like the three-horned Triceratops, whose infamy rivals that of its natural enemy, Tyrannosaurus rex. As extravagant as the Ceratopsian dinosaurs were, these remarkable animals had seemingly unremarkable beginnings, with origins trailing back all the way to the late Jurassic. Early Ceratopsians vaguely resemble their future kin, with diminutive sizes and plain looking appearances, to the point where one wouldn't even recognize them as related, were it not for their peculiar faces. To understand where these animals came from, we must look towards their origins in the Jurassic, with the curious early Ceratopsian Yin Long. Yin Long is the earliest known member of the Ceratopsians, and when we say early, we mean early, with Yin Long currently being the only Ceratopsian dated from the Jurassic period. This primitive, pre-horned dinosaur's name means Hidden Dragon, named after the martial arts film Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Due to Yin Long being discovered so closely to the filming locations in the western province of Xinjiang, China, measuring 3.9 feet (1.2 meters) and weighing an estimated 33 pounds (15 kilograms), Yin Long wasn't what one would consider large. More so in comparison to its multi-ton relatives like Centrosaurus and Chasmosaurus, let alone titans like Taurosaurus and Triceratops. But size wasn't the only factor that made Yin Long so different. With a build more suited for a bipedal or two-legged locomotion, and smaller head-to-body ratio, Yin Long couldn't be more disparate from other Ceratopsians of the later Cretaceous period. At the same time, it maintains the traits that provide a clear giveaway to its true lineage, such as the sharp beak to assist in its herbivorous diet, and an oddly shaped head reminiscent of the Ceratopsians of the future. What's more, Yin Long possesses traits characteristic not only to Ceratopsians, but to early Pachycephalosaurs as well, a group of domed head dinosaurs famous for their friar tuck domes and battering ram skulls. Yin Long possesses several traits found in Pachycephalosaurus that are relatively absent or were gradually lost in its later relatives, such as the potential for a bipedal stance and squamosal ornamentations on the skull. But why would Yin Long have these traits if it was a Ceratopsian? The answer? Evolution, baby! Both Ceratopsians and Pachycephalosaurus belong to the same clade, Marginocephalia a group containing bird hip dinosaurs with bony fringes and adornments on their skulls. Yin Long itself represents one of the earliest members. And what's even more intriguing, due to Yin Long containing traits signature to both Ceratopsians and Pachycephalosaurs, Yin Long provides a key detail in their evolutionary history, supplying a time frame of when Ceratopsians and Pachys split from their family tree, as well as reaffirming their relations to a direct common ancestor. Yin Long itself is key to understanding where Ceratopsians came from and where they started, providing scientists a clearer view on the evolution of horned dinosaurs. Being the earliest member of the group means Yin Long provides a solid base for scientists to examine and trace back across the long line of Ceratopsia. From there, scientists can examine other early Ceratopsians that followed it and analyze how the animals changed and what pressures could have influenced such an astounding evolution. From what we understand of the evolutionary history of Ceratopsia, it was a gradual one, starting with their split from a shared ancestor with Pachycephalosaurus in the Jurassic, evolving into forms like Yin Long, itself being a representative of a recent split at that period of time. Moving into the Cretaceous, the body plan of Yin Long would remain a constant amongst those that would come after, maintaining a mixed stance of bipedal and quadrupedal, while remaining laxed with the presence of skull ornaments, to the point where some were just plain, and of course, the presence of the parrot-like beaks at the end of their snouts, assisting them in shearing through plant matter as they foraged for food. 
These early Ceratopsians remained relatively similar to Yin Long throughout the early and mid Cretaceous. However, as the late Cretaceous began, Ceratopsians would receive a boom in diversity, starting with forms like Protoceratopsids, which gradually began taking on appearances closer to that of later Ceratopsid dinosaurs, evolving a strict quadrupedal stance and a large perforated frill adorning the back of its skull. As Protoceratopsids began to migrate and spread out, they continued to diversify into other groups as they continued to thrive in the late Cretaceous. From the powerful Ceratopsids, those classic horned dinosaurs with shields and spears adorning their skulls that roam the landscapes of the northern hemisphere, to the meek Leptoceratopsids, smaller, much more primitive Ceratopsians that maintain their primitive anatomy as they exploited the niche of small herbivores within the late Cretaceous ecosystems. It would seem that by the time of the late Cretaceous, this diversity boom of Ceratopsia was thanks to the pressures of their environment, like any organism. In their case, it was possibly the newfound opportunities of the new niches that opened up as they began to migrate across Asia into North America and Europe. Another pressure is likely due to the organisms they lived with. However, we don't have to look far to solve this mystery, for the answer can be found right at Yin Long's doorstep, during the Oxfordian stage of the Jurassic. The world Yin Long lived in was a big one for such a little dinosaur, coexisting alongside giants like Mementisaurus, who had one of the longest necks of any dinosaur. So long, in fact, that the neck itself took up half the dinosaur's body length. Or the bristled Jing Junosaurus, an early stegosaur, all at the mercy of large carnivores like Sinraptor, a ferocious Mechiacanthosaur. However, Large predators like Sinraptor were the least of Yin Long's worries, who, while small in stature, shares a lineage with a group of dinosaurs very intimate with the descendants of Yin Long. A dinosaur discovered at the same site, representing a key point in dinosaur evolution, except this dinosaur's lineage would eventually lead to the likes of the Tyrannosaurs, some of the greatest predators ever described. <laughs> Guan Long, meaning the crown dragon, for the peculiar crest atop of its skull. What's more interesting is that these animals not only shared the same ecosystem, but likely shared a predator-prey relationship. As this relationship rippled amongst future Ceratopsians and Tyrannosaurs, an arms race sparked between the two groups with each of their members developing traits to get a leg up on the other, in some cases, literally. The relationship between Ceratopsians and Tyrannosaurs is a classic case of coevolution. Coevolution is when two or more groups of organisms evolve in response to one another. In the case of these two groups of dinosaurs, it was a response thanks to their predator-prey relationship with Ceratopsians evolving more efficient defenses to evade and defend themselves from predators, while Tyrannosaurs, in response, evolved more efficient tools to bring down their prey. This is supported by the fact that within their ecosystems, you will often find them with one another. In Hell Creek, there was Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops. In Prince Creek, there was Pachyrhinosaurus and Nanuxaurus. In the Jinzu Yang Formation, there was Sinoceratops and Zhucheng Tyrannus, and in the Dinosaur Park Formation, there was Centrosaurus, Styracosaurus, and a whole slew of other Ceratopsians, alongside the likes of Despletosaurus and Gorgosaurus as the local Tyrannosaurus. A predator-prey relationship spanning millions of years, starting with creatures like Yin Long and Guan Long. Yin Long is an interesting dinosaur not because of what it is, but because of what it represents. The limitless potential of evolution and how every organism to live on this planet is affected by this drive to adapt and thrive. This meek, seemingly unremarkable animal held the key to not only the evolution of its descendants, but subsequently influenced the evolution of the creatures around it, be it its distant relatives or eternal rivals. A surprising legacy for such a plucky little dinosaur.